Who was the real Jake Spoon? Lonesome Dove is a beloved historical novel and iconic Western TV series. We know Gus and Call were based on cattlemen Oliver Loving and Charles Goodnight. Blue Duck was a real outlaw, born in the Cherokee Nation. But how many know of the real Jacob Spoon? Where did author Larry McMurtry come up with that character? Did he just pull the name off a Texas headstone? The real Jake Spoon is nothing like the character in Lonesome Dove. He was a real-life cowboy who made about ten trips from Texas to Kansas, died on a cot in his front yard, and is buried in Menard, Texas. He would probably be rolling over in his grave at the Pioneer Rest Cemetery to know his name had become synonymous with a despicable outlaw who abused women. The real Jacob Spoon was such an upstanding representative of the trail-driving cowboy. He was even immortalized in a poem written by a fellow cowboy, J.R. Pettit, Sam Hunter's Trail Hands, sometime in the early 1900s. Jake Spoon's the flank puncher, so slowly he rides. He punches the doggies from center to side. Jake is an old puncher, he's been there before, has punched the doggies in gone days of yore. Author Megan Willome has written about the main characters in McMurtry's story. She was spot on in her assessment of Jake's character. Here is her presentation of the weak and affable Jake and why he is a character we love to hate. Lonesome Dove, Part 6 Jake Spoon. Well, I guess I've been in love before, once or twice and on the floor. I love the Paul Simon song, Late in the Evening, from which that line comes. Jake's the kind of fellow who's good with lines. Heck, I think he slept with every woman in the book. He can't love any woman more than that. Gus says of Jake, he liked Jake but felt him to be too leaky a vessel to hold so much hope. That's what Jake is, a leaky vessel. Newt practically worshiped Jake. All the hands like him. Lori put so much hope in him that she left Lonesome Dove because she believed Jake would take her to San Francisco. When we meet Jake, he's already running from the law for shooting July's brother, a dentist. His proud days of rangering with Gus and Carl are in the past. He's let himself drift. He drifted into Lonesome Dove. He drifted into the Dry Bean Saloon and Lorena's arms. He drifted onto the cattle drive. Then he drifted into Austin to gamble. And then he drifted into the company of the Suggs brothers, a bunch of mortaring her horse thieves. McMurtry writes, it's his darn laziness, Call said. Jake just kind of drifts. Any wind can blow him. Gus is wise enough to know that he and Jake are cut from the same cloth. He's only a few shades removed from ending up like his old compañero. After all, Gus likes whiskey and women, just like Jake. Gus likes a game of cards, just like Jake. Gus doesn't particularly like to work just like Jake. The difference? Gus has spent his entire career with Captain Call. Jake left, then came back, then left again. The company a man keeps makes a difference. Of course, you can't overlook the fact that the whole reason Call goes to Montana is because Jake had been there and told him it was a cattleman's paradise. Call risks his own life the lives of several hired hands, dozens of horses, and 3,000 head of cattle based on the word of a gambler, a gambler who deserts them. When they finally catch up with him, Jake appeals to all of them, Dietz, Call, Gus, P.I., Newt, trying to convince them that he didn't do anything, that he planned to leave the Suggs brothers, that he just said hello to a girl and the rest was just self-defense, that he's no killer, but then Jake damns himself. 
McMurtry writes. Jake, you might want to know that I got Lori back, Gus said. Who? Jake asked. And that's when you're ready to hang Jake yourself, after all that Lori suffered at the hands of Blue Duck and his gang. We've all known men like Jake, charming fellows, the kind that both men and women want to be near, the kind with no self-awareness, no conscience. Gus predicted Jake would be hanged when he left the Rangers. He just didn't expect he'd have to do it himself. McMurtry writes, there was no more likable man in the West and no better rider either, but riding wasn't everything and neither was likableness. Something in Jake didn't quite stick. Something wasn't quite consistent. Rest easy, Jake. Now that we know you were one of the good ones, we will celebrate you as the real trail hand you were. Thank you.